What's up everyone, welcome to Ben's Car Reviews, I'm Ben and today we'll be dissecting the 2024 Nissan C. Let's get right into it with the chart. There will be three different trim options available to you on your 2024 Nissan Z, Sport, Performance, and Nismo, of course. Ranging from 42310 up to 65000 and change, so major price difference across these three, so hopefully there is a Z that lands in your price range, giving you what you want. Engine options. Sport and Performance could have a 3-liter twin-turbo V6, giving you 400 horsepower, 350 pound-feet of torque. Phenomenal, phenomenal to see that kind of power, especially on a base trim. I love that you know they all have that. And the Nismo will get you a specifically tuned version of that, giving you a little more power at 420 horsepower, 384 pound-feet of torque. So definitely some great performance numbers here to be had. Transmission-wise, Sport and Performance are going to come with a 6-speed manual transmission or a 9-speed automatic. The Nismo will be just a 9-speed auto. Not exactly sure as to why there's not a manual option for that, but it's just the way it is. Rear-wheel drive is going to be your setup across all three. Looking at MPGs, they're nearly the same. Uh, you're going to get 18 in the city, 24 on the highway. Nismo gets you one less in the city, but overall, not too bad. Real quick, guys, here at Ben's Car Reviews, I strive to bring the most accurate relevant information under 10 minutes. There's no misleading, no wasted time. If that's something that's intriguing to you, and you like this content as you watch, please like and subscribe so you can continue to grow the channel. Let's keep going. The new look Nissan Z is back again with a lot of performance and high price tags to accompany it. I've yet to see a new Gen Z in the wild, and I'm crediting that to these price tags. And I can also probably attribute not seeing one partly due to living in the north. Maybe people aren't just wanting their vehicle uh, to be this kind of uh, setup, rear-wheel drive, you know, sports car. But uh, regardless, I think price tags have a huge, uh, you know, part of why you're not seeing them too often. Um, because beyond those potential reasons, the design is great. I can only assume it's a thrill to drive. You know, we'll see what it has to offer here. There's available launch control, which helps reduce wheel, wheel spin and hop by holding the engine at a preset RPM and modulating power as you pull away to give you fast, consistent acceleration. There's an available no lift shift and mechanical limited slip differential uh, for the Z's impressive power, kind of keep it in control. The aluminum double wishbone front suspension, die cast subframe, yeah, subframe and multi-link rear suspension are light and strong. You know, this thing really is kind of engineered to be, um, you know, a sports car, a true sports car. 18 inch wheels on the sport. The other two are gonna get 19 inch raised brand, super lightweight forged alloy wheels. All are wrapped in high performance tires and the Nismo has the widest tires. And you're gonna get 285s on that. Tuned to get powerful braking with an excellent pedal feel. The sport has basic two piston calipers. Top two trims are gonna get you four piston Acabono performance brakes featuring 14 inch front rotors and four piston calipers. So definitely some great braking performance, which of course we all know is so important to overall performance. All trims are to get continuously variable valve timing control system on the intake and exhaust valves. Nismo gets a Nismo intercooler sub radiator. You're going to get paddle shifters with that automatic transmission, launch control and rev match on the top two trims. Monotube shock absorbers on these. Nismo gets a Nismo tuned suspension. Performance gets a chin spoiler and a rear spoiler. Nismo has the Nismo aerodynamic body design, including front and rear fascias, side sills, and a rear spoiler. You will get full LEDs on the headlights, taillights, and daytime running lights. And obviously with very recognizable designs that are attractive, especially that rear end. I love how they've done those taillights. You get dual exhaust tips on all trims, which is great to see. Definitely the best looking setup that you could get. And for $495, I want to throw in, you can get racing stripes for the hood, roof, and hatch. Stripes are made of a durable, easy to wash material. Choosing a best bang for your buck when the three trims cover a price range of roughly $17K is no easy task. However, I'm definitely picking the sport. And I'll say that because not only is this trim $10,000 cheaper than the performance, it's the same mechanically in every way. The differences in these trims comes nearly all with the standard interior features. And honestly, if we're being frugal here, those amenities aren't worth the $10,000 jump. Uh, if the performance offered increased power, then I can see the $10,000 being justified. But I don't. I, but I think the best way to get your Z is to just outfit the sport trim. Matching the stylish and sporty exterior 
is an interior that is eye-catching, uh, and if you want to pay, you'll get numerous top amenities to ride in comfort. The Sport's going to get an 8-inch infotainment touchscreen. The other two are going to get a 9-inch screen. Again, $10,000 hike to get a 9-inch screen over an 8-inch. I don't see that being worth it. Just one example. Wireless Apple CarPlay Android or wireless Apple CarPlay capability, Android Auto is wired. The 12.3 inch driver's digital gauge cluster is standard on all trims. Again, you're not getting an elevated uh, info area going with the performance. The three gauges at the top of the dash are set at driver's eye height angled towards the driver. They display turbo boost, turbine speed, and voltage. There's an eight speaker Bose premium audio system in these, optional interior ambient lighting, the spherical shift knob is wrapped in a one piece of leather to eliminate stitching for better grip. The steering wheel has GTR inspired grips and gets the classic Z badge in the center. The seats are made for great lateral support and there's an available anti-slip material and a slide reducing center pad. Seats are cloth in the Sport, leather in the Performance and Recaro leather, leather in the Nismo. Steering wheels are leather wrapped and Nismo's is in Alcantara. Handy features include a phone storage spot, USB ports, a center cup holder, and another hidden under the sliding console. You can get a retractable cargo cover to hide things from the exterior, like looking out uh, from the outside of the car into the trunk area, you can get that covered. And you're going to get some nice standard driver's assist, safety and technology features standard. Overall, I like what Nissan has done here and what they're offering. As I've mentioned a couple times, price tags are deserving of a lot. Of top features and thankfully the z delivers pretty well on that and again what you're getting for the ten thousand dollar hike in price i just don't see being worth it because the sport still is outfitting you either the same or close enough uh, that's my argument on that interview guys if you're in the market for a two-door sports car with the potential for a standard transmission uh, you know an engine giving you some power then this z could be a great option for you here in 2024 the biggest competitor that comes to mind right away, Toyota Supra. Uh, they're really going to fall in line well going against this price-wise, performance-wise, and all that. Um, Size-wise, all that. It's a really kind of nice comparison there. Beyond that, you know, two-door standard shift, um, you know, sports cars on the market right now. Beyond that would be a Toyota GR86, you know, Subaru BRZ, you know, stuff like that, um, which I'll attach videos for what I've done for those reviews right at the end of this video. Check those out to cross-compare, but... You know, there are some fun options available, but if going with the Z, I think you're going to get something really unique. Because like I've said, I've not seen many of them. I've actually seen a few Supras, um, BRZs, and GR86s, certainly a little more common, as they are far more affordable than this. Um, yes, they are definitely less powerful, but they are more affordable. Um, definitely a good option if you want that two-door manual transmission, but not spend fifty dollars to $60,000 for it. Definitely check those out. But if this is what you're looking for, I think it's going to be a great option for you. I'd love to see more. I'd love to drive one someday. I'd be super jealous if you got one. If you can get that Nissan, nice definitely go for it because I think that would just be so cool to own. Um, and just tell Nissan that they need to throw a hood scoop on there. Hope this video lay things out clear way for you guys. Thank you for watching Spence Car Review. Please subscribe if not already. If you have an idea for a future review, drop in the comments and I'll see what I can do. If you like, come and remember the channel, I have that option. Check that out and join if you'd like. And I'll catch you on the next Spence Car Review. <laughs>